GPU. Hey everyone, thanks for having you here and watching the video. I'd like to say a thank you very much for your support and your feedback so far. I recently found out about Comfy UI and Control Nets and I hope uh, the workflow is of use for you. When I started with all of this I found out that most of the knowledge and workflow that could be of use for my needs are behind some paywall. There are uh, also some apps trying to sell the functionality you can basically get for free. So let's dive into the details. Talking about details, I'd like to show you what I usually do. Here you can see a rendering created in 3ds Max, uh, rendered in V-Ray and a variation. Not much AI here is applied, but you can see these people. Um, this is not Photoshop, this is uh, AI. The rendering of the people was like this and with the workflow you can just turn them into people like you see here. But you are most likely interested in the images I showed you in the teaser. So here uh, this is a base image uh, what I used to create the outputs you saw. It's a normal pass rendered in a few seconds from V-Ray from a really uh, low effort scene uh, 3ds Max. You can see uh, it's just one tree here copied around from Cosmos library and five minutes of modeling uh, in this case was enough to have the base geometry that I wanted to see. Yeah, I created uh, a ZDEV pass. You can see this is not optimal, but uh, as yeah, everything here was used for testing only. I kept to the things I had and uh, I created a multi-mask. I didn't use this one at all in the uh, example. But by now I highly recommend to have something like this. Yeah, and this is uh, one of the example outputs I already showed you. This is a good example because uh, we still have major flaws in the image. An architect would maybe not have planned a roof like this. You are having missing reflections all over it, etc., etc. But uh, we have a very good amount of nice details everywhere and I consider it a great image if you regard the effort we put into it so far. So this is a workflow and um, yeah I created some basic guidance over here on the top. You can basically see and read what you have to do to make this thing work. First of all, you will put all your models in here. Um, for example, I use a Juggernaut SDXL model for the first path. I use a lot of control net, as you can see. An IP adapter, you can put your LoRa's into here. I'm using the GGUF model version in a Q8 variation from Flux. Sam 2 and Florence 2 doing our segmentation here. And we have an upscaler. Uh, in this case it's uh, four times uh, ultra sharp. Second step is to put your base images here. I already did that. Uh, you can drag and drop your images onto the nodes or uh, choose a file in the explorer and uh, yeah then you can uh, control what both of the workflows will exactly do. You see base config um, panel here to bypass what you don't want for the generation process. Here you can switch between both the main yeah, tools that are included. If you put this to 1 then the denoise will automatically be 1.0 as you will denoise your image by 100%. If you put this to 2 you can use the slider to have control over your denoise. Yeah. You can switch if your input will be resized to this resolution or you can switch to your original input. Then you can uh, say if you want, for example, uh, people in your image, you can uh, generate people by flux or you may have some rendered people in your image that you will turn into more uh, photorealistic versions. If you use the flux generation thing, your people will get color graded a little bit and this is the amount that will uh, be applied. And of course you can define by prompt what kind of person or whatever you will put into your 
image, I already let it all generate to have uh, the outputs already here. In this case, I didn't use a person. Uh, to have that, you just open your base image input in the mask editor. You draw something like this to let the IA know where you want to put your person in this case. And then you turn off the groups you want. So we need the segmentation to find uh, the people in the image we generate. We want to generate a person here and we want to uh, composite into the uh, rendering. Yeah, the global prompt uh, I also use mainly for the first pass XL generation. I like to keep it uh, separated, the object and the environment and the light, etc. It gets concatenated in the end, so you can just put a very long prompt also in the first panel. But as I said, you will most likely customize all of this to your needs. For the uh, second stage rendering here, where we use Flux to have more details from the SDXL output, you can, for example, uh, let Florence describe your image and have that description as an input prompt for your generation afterwards. Here uh, are the control switches and sliders for the control net. I use two control nets in this pass and in this case I had an extra render element here, the mentioned ZDEVs, that I am using with this switch over here. If I turn this to 2, I also can, for example, um, use the generated ZDEVs from the control net preprocessors that you will find over here. They are all uh, already set up. Uh, you may want to use something else that more will fit your needs. To switch something, you have to turn off the connections. And for example, I want to use the Dev uh, Anything uh, version 2. And to have this, I put this here. This is all I do. To switch the preprocessors, here uh, you have the mask area where you basically uh, from your input image get uh, a separated mask for your, yeah, for your needs. In this case, uh, my details are conserved by uh, this image here. Talking about this feature, this is what I called detail conservation. So basically it transfers details from the image of your input. In this case, I painted some vertical lines here for my facade. This is conserved but through all the stages. If you turn this off, you will most likely get not as much as straight lines as we want to have in architecture at all. Here now we are more into the details of our generation process and at the end we have our output panel where you can compare your your passes or the generation so this is for example the base image the output of the first pass here we have the comparison between the first pass and um, the second pass and here we have the comparison uh, between the second pass and the upscaled version which you will find here again and uh, just for testings here uh, input and final output so you will see if your control net does what you want it to do so now that we have set up everything, we just let it generate and then we uh, have a look at the timings. GPU. Going. Going. The first thing you have to do is um, choose a preview from your first stage. In this case, you can choose between two previews. You can also set the batch size to a much higher value. This will take longer, but then you have more options to choose from. Just for testing, we say this one is a better one. So let's go ahead. 
Render frames now. Render frames now. Render frames now. Go in. Design dreams and visions clear. Build it to skyscrape desire. Bites and bits. Ignite the fire. From code to vision. Towers rise. So, this took a little bit more than 10 minutes. It is uh, compared to other AI generations, it's uh, not very fast. Uh, but if you use it for architectural imagery, you um, may be like I am. I used to have very long render times, and 10 minutes is like nothing. If you compare um, what you have now, you have an image that is about uh, 4000 pixel on its long size and it came from an image that was 1500 pixel on its long side here. And you control all of this by um, only the upscale factor of this. So, for example, if you put the upscale factor to 8, you will receive an image that is 12,228 pixels on its long side, if you want to have that. And if you ha already have uh, some kind of uh, rendering as a base image, something maybe like this over here, you see we have uh, 3D people in here and maybe you have another uh, extra path for it. You maybe also want uh, in this case to use the uh, IP adapter um, with a image that is more like what you prefer here. So you going to switch this uh, number here so we are using the other generation process we want 3d people to be in painted we do not want the flux people and for the input of the people we use the original input here yeah we wanted the IP adapter we have still the extra path from our control net and because of what we switched here we now can denoise with a lower or a higher value uh, whatever you your need is. In this case I will just uh, upscale by a factor of 2 to save some time. Well, we hit generate. Oh no, wait, before we do not want more previews here and we can always uh, take the first generation to proceed here and then we hit Q. In tech we trust. In tech we trust. The dream of five. Virtual wall with perfect lines. GPU hung. Art redefined, blueprints come alive, digital vines, and cities boom in binary sign. Render frames now, render frames now. This Render game frame took uh, about eight minutes, and uh, now we have an image, um, at least for the for the people that we most likely find some uh, more realism in. Yeah, everything. Uh, you can see the car. Um, maybe the facade in this case is not what we wanted, but uh, to our luck we had uh, an original uh, rendering that may be better for this. So this is maybe something I would paint in Photoshop now. Depending on the setting of your workflow, um, you will also get some more creative results uh, of something like this here, uh, according to your prompt. You may vary your outputs to your needs. And with a higher denoise value, you can control the amount of uh, how much of your image will get changed. And if you use a realistic uh, trained model, um, then you may get more of a photo quality like you see here. With a higher upscale factor, we get basically um, images like this in this quality. Uh, you should um, be aware that this will take even longer then. Um, yeah, 
that's it. I hope you like what you see and I hope you still are uh, of interest uh, about the whole thing here. I still plan to release this as soon as I reach my goal. So if you want to support by sharing, by spreading the word about this tool here, I will be very happy that you will have this hopefully very soon. Thank you for watching. Yeah, have a good day and see you. Thank you.